Fans, welcome to Carver Arena and Wiku Court, where tonight your Vikings will play host to the Central Washington Wildcats. Fans, we'd like to begin tonight by acknowledging that we gather on the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish people who have lived in the Salish Sea Basin throughout the San Juan Islands and North Cascade watersheds from time immemorial. Please join us in expressing our deepest respect and gratitude for our indigenous neighbors, the Lummi Nation and Nooksack Tribe, for their enduring care and protection of our shared lands and waterways. Fans, at this time, we'd like to ask you to rise if you are able and remove your hats. It's time now to honor America as the Western Washington University Band plays our national anthem. Fans, welcome to Senior Night here at Carver Arena. We will be honoring the Vikings' three departing seniors with a special halftime recognition dedicated to our senior cheer and band members. But first, we'd like to recognize a great senior manager, Mustafa Samora, for all of his work with this program. Mustafa, we'd like to say thank you for all you do behind the scenes. All right, fans, it's time to begin our senior night recognition. First up, he has been a member for four years of the Viking program after transferring from Concordia, Portland. He's appeared in 46 games, making six starts while in a Viking uniform. The best way to describe him is all out, all the time. A prolific rebounder and big time defensive player, along with being a great teammate Please welcome to the floor with his family, Isaac Moreau. Fans, our next senior has been a corner three-point specialist since he arrived here on campus at Western Washington after transferring from Portland Community College. When the Vikings have needed a three-pointer, they've dialed up number 22 to take that big shot. Darius has appeared in 50 games as a Viking and connected on over 43% of his shots from behind the arc. Please welcome to the floor Darius Gary, a.k.a. DG3, along with his family.
Finn Tarlan Sr. has been a great all-around player for the Vikings over the last two seasons, appearing in 54 games and making 41 starts. He transferred in from the University of Georgia, and Jay Nett has averaged over 11 points a game and has been one of the conference leaders in steals. In addition, he scored over 600 points in a Viking uniform and over 1,000 for his entire collegiate career. Please welcome to the floor, along with his family, Jonathan Ned. Fans, now let's meet the starting lineups for tonight's contest. First, the visitors from Central Washington. A 6'2 guard, he's a freshman, number two, Kevin Holden. At guard, a 6'5 freshman, number three, Bradley Swilly. At guard, a 6'2 senior, number five, Jello Lloyd. At forward, a 6'6 senior, number 24, Samad Hector. And at forward, a 6'6 freshman, number 33, Maverick Sanders. Central Washington is coached by Brendan Renta. Coach Renta is assisted by Drew Church and Kelton Williams. All right, six man, put your hands together. It's time now to meet the starting lineup for your Viking. At guard, a 6'4 junior, number one, KJ Kai Johnson. At guard, a 5'11 Richard Pressman, number three, T. John C. At forward, a 6'9 senior, number 13, Jonathan Ned. At forward, a 6'9", junior, number 20, Nick Phelps. And at guard, a 6'4", junior, number 44, Will Wilson. Your Vikings, they're coached by Tony Dominguez. He is assisted by A.J. Albright, Bob Hostetter, and Otavio Jude. Six man, it's Keith. Welcome to Rivalry Night, Central Washington, Western Washington. It doesn't get better than this when the Wildcats and the Vikings go head-to-head. -head. And to make it even better, it's senior night for Jonathan Ned, Darius Gary, and Isaac Moreau. It's going to be a fun one. We have Pat Carver, Zen Hill, Butch Kamina alongside with me. I'm excited to call this one, Butch. The 267th meeting of these schools. Hey, from Everson to Munich, people are excited about this, right? This is, this is as good as it gets on the West Coast of Division II basketball. The history of this, the rivalries, the packed houses over the years. It's always fun, it's always crazy. We'll have some evidence of that later. Exactly, and playoff implications this year could not mean more in this game. Central Washington needing just one win to clinch their spot in the GNAC postseason tournament. Three teams have already clinched. Central Washington trying to be the next. Western Washington won the tip and they're on offense first. Kai Johnson in the post with a fadeaway one-handed hook. Cannot get it to go though. And Central Washington turns it into offense for the first time. Outlet pass quickly down low. Pump fake and now up through the contact is Maverick Sanders finishing. Central Washington getting on the board first. Vikings need this win at a 7-9 conference record. And with Seattle Pacific as well as Alaska Anchorage already winning earlier today. It just gets tighter and tighter as the last three teams try and fit in to the GNAC postseason tournament. Here's Jonathan Ned, deep three-pointer. He's too short on it. Kai Johnson gets an offensive rebound. Try to get a bounce pass inside, but past Tijon Sane, and it's a turnover for the Vikings. Oh, the thought was a good one, because Tijon Sane had a layup there if that, if that pass connects. Western Washington coming off Thursday's win against Northwest Nazarene. That was a big win for them as far as keeping their season alive. They took a 10-point victory, 74-64 to on Thursday. 
Here's driving off the rim is no good from Jello Lloyd. Vikings going quickly now. Tijon Sane on the right side. Will Wilson with the ball now. Wilson crossing over, getting to the lane, kicks into the corner. Here's the senior, Ned, once again. Can't get it. Offensive rebound fought for by Nick Velp. Velp looking for a teammate outside. He finds Sane. Kai Johnson spinning around a defender and a jelly layup in. Johnson floating through traffic to even things up early. Samad Hector is out there. This is Kevin Holden. He's coming off a phenomenal game on Thursday, but he travels there and turns it over. A little bit of the feeling out process here. Big game, big game for both teams in terms of the standings and the rivalry. And a nice little move by Kai Johnson there to get Western on the board. Central Washington coming off a 71-67 victory over Simon Frazier north of the border. Here's Will Wilson for the Vikings. Kicks across the court to Kai Johnson. Driving kick into the corner this time. Tijan Sane. One more time outside. Fake now a three from Ned, and he buries that one on his third attempt. He was determined, wasn't he? He was going to get off the mark early on senior night. He's had very open looks already and delivers on that one. That was probably the toughest of the three. Exactly. Had to do a double move through it. Ball on the ground. Nick Velp fighting for it along as with Sanders. No tie-up instead of throw out of bounds. And a turnover from Central Washington. So one of the things we'll see tonight, two very balanced teams. Even though Kai Johnson is 12th in the country in scoring, the Vikings have six players in double figures, averaging in double figures. Central at the other end only has two, but they get the leading team in the conference in bench scoring, in part because of Jello Lloyd, who's making just his second start of the night, but is their leading scorer at over 13 points a game. And even off the bench against Simon Frazier, they had Kevin Holden have 25 points on Thursday. Here's Kai Johnson spinning once again and finishing. Very similar in the Vikings of a five-point lead. Pull up three, Jello Lloyd off the rim into the corner. Kai Johnson tips it into his own bench and out of bounds. It'll remain on central side. Jello Lloyd spent a year at Western. It was the COVID year, so he never played. Um, the Vikings practiced off and on, but... Uh, he never played many transfer to Seattle U. Spent a couple years there and now finishing up the collegiate career with the Wildcats. Outside, Kevin Holden guarded by Tijon Sane. They get it back to him. Ten on the shot clock for Central Washington in this possession. Sanders is handling it high outside. They've got to get a shot rolling. It's a deep one from Holden off back iron. Tijon Sane turns with it. He's got three Vikings with him. Will Wilson takes it to the oh, cup and finishes. Nice. It's a 9-0 run for the Vikings, giving him a 9-2 early lead. Central Washington going quickly on offense. Lloyd has it stripped loose and out of bounds, and it'll stay on the Wildcats' side. Jello Lloyd, not just a former Viking, a former high school teammate of D'Angelo Minnis as well Ooh. at Kentwood High School. Did not realize that. Central Washington looking for a way to stop this 9-0 run. Early on in this first half, Samad Hector gets it off the glass over Nick Velp. He's the second leading scorer, 12.8 a game. Uh, leads the conference in block shots, leads the conference in rebounds per game as well. He's coming off six points and nine rebounds against Simon Frazier as well as a block. Jonathan Ned on the right side. Ned, step back from the mid-range, is too short on it, maybe a piece tipped from it. Lloyd with an outlet pass up into the corner to Sanders. Sanders finds a cutting, oh. Swilly who gets in and the Wildcats finish again. Nice finish by Swilly. Full speed, caught the ball, laid it off the board. Bradley Swilly, a freshman out of Bella Vista College Preparatory High School. One of many freshmen that have seen plenty of minutes for this Wildcats team as Kai Johnson keeps it rolling for Western Washington. Another basket inside for KJ. Samad Hector directing traffic on the left side with Jonathan Ned guarding him. Hector's going to go to work with his back to the basket. Hector up through Ned, rolls around, and Nick Velp grabs a rebound. Vikings up five. Tijon Sane thought about a pass, but will slow down the offense for Western Washington. Western Washington, ninth in Division II in points per game. They average 88.7. Here's Nick Velp. Bounces around, and Ooh. off a lucky bounce gets it in. The world's softest rim. Right on cue. Pays on again. Vikings up 13-6. Hector, he'll try a three-pointer. Hits off back iron, tipped around. Central Washington offensive rebound. Swilly tries to get it back, but unable to. And Will Wilson secures the rebound this time for the Vikings. 
Will Wilson coming off 19 points, a perfect shooting night from the field as he turns it over. Central Washington going quick. Here is Lloyd with the left hand. Acceleration from Jello Lloyd there. He said 13.2 points a game. He does it playing just a tick over 20 minutes. It has been an impressive season for him. He's getting the nod here tonight, as we mentioned. Just his second start this year, despite being the leading scorer for Central Washington, as the Vikings turn it over on that possession from Kai Johnson. Swilly behind the back, crosses court. Kai Johnson with a block out of bounds. Great defensive effort will set us into our first media timeout in this rivalry matchup. Western Washington leading by five when we come back. You're watching Vikings TV. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Welcome back to Carver Gym. A 13-8 lead for your Vikings out of the first media timeout. 14-19 left in this first half. It has been a fun back and forth so far with Western Washington holding the lead right now. This has been uncharacteristic start at least. Western Washington has lost the last three matchups between these two teams, but yet they look like the better team early on so far. Uh, hey, rivalry games, you never know. And it's the Vikings over the last 15, 20 years have a 26-13 advantage in this rivalry, although... The full gamut, Central 160, Vikings 106. Central Washington on offense. Out of the timeout, there's a foul down low as an entry pass was trying to get down there. Nick Velt was wrapping around a defender, so Central Washington will do it again from the baseline. You go back to that. There are just some huge drivers. And the Wildcats in the 70s and 80s were the dominant non-Division one team in the Pacific Northwest. They won district championship after district championship. Jordan Clark inside for the Wildcats and a tip back as well. Central Washington showing the hustle on the offensive glass and they've cut it to a one possession game now. Same starters out there for the Vikings. No adjustments made out of the first media timeout. Will Wilson in the corner goes across court as far as you can go to Jonathan Ned who has a defender closing out. Jonathan Ned with 10 on the shot clock moving to his right pulls up with a hand in his face. And a rebound grab by the Wildcats. Swilly quickly kicks out, top of the key. McNeil driving into the paint, into the corner, back to Swilly for three. Off the front of the rim, rebounded though by Brizzy. Kick out McNeil for three, he gets it that time and we're all tied up, 13 apiece. Big time shot for Central Washington. And with 13 minutes left in this first half, which team will take the advantage going forward? Tijon Saint, he's going to take a three. Try to answer off the right side. No good. Rebounded by Swilly for Central Washington. Swilly finds a backdoor cutter in McNeil. Sanders tries his own three. Can't get it on a short bounce. Vikings will settle with Kai Johnson now. In the last ten matchups between these teams, they're an even five and five, so they've been neck and neck over their last couple of histories, the last five seasons at least. Here's Sanders getting it down to Brizzy. Tried to get the cutting McNeil, and it bounced out of bounds. And the two seniors for Western Washington entering the game, Darius Gary as well as Isaac Moreau to join the third senior, Jonathan Ned on the court. The, the full three senior lineup now. And Maverick Sanders for Central, Central checks out. Maverick, do you think the parents were Top Gun fans? Oh, definitely. Uh, Easily. Yeah. It's the right age and everything else. Uh, yeah, it's. I don't even know if that's the best call sign from the movie, though. Oh, man. With you, but. Iceman, come on. Here's Seth Dawson driving for CWU. In the post now is Brizzy trying to go to work on the newly checked in Morrow. He does, but it rolls out 
Offensive rebound and a putback, though, by Brizzy. Good hustle for Central Washington to take a lead. Ice band may be taken in a basketball context. It, 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 there, there, is, there is precedent on that one. <laughs> Vikings looking to answer on this possession. Haven't had a basket in a while. Ty Johnson from a long two. Bounces around up and can't get it. Rebound by Central Washington. Colby Ooh. Jeanette gets that one and a turnover out of bounds as Cameron McNeil could not handle it. Sloppy outlet pass, kind of through the, uh, the little underhander, the old football coach's throw there, and uh, it got away. Vikings get it off the turnover on midcourt. Crowd still filing in here. It's starting to fill up the, the upper deck on the far side that you can't see on camera. Darius Gary going to work outside on the left side, switching cross court. Darius Gary with a dribble on his hand. They get the ball to Jonathan Ned with 10 on the shot clock. Ned moving with haste to the oh. right and off the glass with a layup. Oh, he just kept turning the corner and the help never came. And Jonathan Ned gets all the way to the rim, five points now. Once again tied up between these two rival schools. Seth Dawson trying to get past Gary, has to kick out to McNeil. McNeil pass out to Jeanette and another turnover for Central Washington on an offensive possession. And that'll bring us to another media timeout. We're all knotted up with 11.18 left. You're watching Vikings TV. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sam Carver Gymnasium. A little, little work from the Viking cheerleaders tonight. Uh, celebrated for a, a national championship on Thursday that, that they won down in California. 15 all, 11-18 remaining in the first half. As he said, the crowd continues to fill up. I think this is already the biggest crowd of the season. Uh, the Both upper decks uh, reasonably full. Back to the play-by-play -play with Zen Hill. And it's looking nice. The whole marketing around this game was to pack Carver. They did a good job, whether it's the students here or the families and friends supporting as Western Washington misses out of the timeout from Will Wilson. So now Central Washington going quickly a drive, and that ball is tipped out of bounds. Western wants it, and they will get it. Uh, but the turnover from Central Washington as Louis Grant Holiday comes in for the Vikings. Yeah, Seth Holden, the transfer from Coastal Carolina. Thought that ball was tipped, but officials said otherwise. Jonathan Ned sitting down as well for Western Washington. Louis Grant Holiday from London. Is the family staying up late to watch this one? They've got it. Last home game. A uh, 3 a.m. tip off in Sutton. <laughs> so that's been every game the for southern them. Southern suburbs of London. Guy Johnson with his back to the basket, looking for a turnaround. He will take it after a fake. He's too long on it. Isaac Murrow, offensive rebound, drop step with the left hand. He takes the lead for the Vikings. This is a Central Washington team that is the third highest scoring offense, but also the third best defense in the GNAC as that one's turned over by Central Washington. Vikings playing some pesky defense tonight. Kick into the corner. Darius Gary can't get it. Grant Holiday had it tipped out of his hands, but he was actually the one with the last contact on it. It'll be Central Washington ball. Louis Grant Holiday was key the other night. Vikings are down nine with about nine minutes to go. He comes in, immediately makes a steal. Next position, Will Wilson makes a steal, gives it to Grant Holler. It is a great long lead pass to get Johnson a layup. It triggered that Viking comeback. They end up beating Northwest Nazarene by 10, keeping their GNAC playoff hopes alive, getting in that tournament. He played just five minutes on Thursday, and it was those late minutes as well where he made the impact, and that was yep. when, he, when he only saw the floor, that is. Yeah, he did not come in until about the nine-minute mark remaining and immediately made two big plays. Vikings wanted to travel. They don't get it. Lloyd 
Passes oh, inside, nice. Isaac Moreau takes it away himself instead. Great anticipation by Isaac Moreau. Louis Grant Holiday, back to Kai Johnson, the point guard. Waving off his teammates from the left side as he's alone now, calling Louis Grant Holiday over. Moreau gives to Wilson, Wilson spinning around, gets the cutting, Isaac Moreau with a move, can't finish though. Just a bit too strong. Vikings still hold a two point lead, 17-15. Jello Lloyd guarded by Will Wilson. Lloyd trying to get around, pulls up near the elbow and buries it. Yeah, I heard a lot about Jello Lloyd, and I understand it. He just, the guy just looks like a scorer, the way he moves. This is a fantastic shooting Wildcat team with a 47.5 field goal percentage. As a foul is called on the floor by Kai Johnson. Kai Johnson's first personal foul. Last time these two teams met was in Ellensburg this year. Central Washington dominated with a 97-75 lead in a game where Western Washington never held really a lead. They held the lead for 19 seconds, but it was all the Wildcats in their home court. So far the Vikings holding strong in this first half. Rizzi the big man kicks out to Lloyd. Lloyd with Grant Holiday on him. Lloyd looking to take advantage. Now Isaac Moreau switched on. Jello Lloyd gets to his spot, pulls up and buries it once again in the mid-range. <laughs> and he, he didn't he didn't talk, he just smiled. He just smiled at the, <laughs> the home bench. Look at of the, the western Vikings. bench of this. <laughs> We've had some interesting bench and visiting team interactions this year. That one was more of the calm ones. Will Wilson inside. Great pass by Grant Holiday and a great cut by Wilson to tie things back up. We are neck and neck so far. Lloyd, a deep three-pointer. He's too short, but an offensive rebound gathered by Holden. Gavin Holden without a dribble. Jeanette on the outside, 13 on the shot like They get it inside, and Darius Gary dove under the offensive player. Yeah. He'll pick up a foul. Got under Mitch Brzee a little bit there. Jello Lloyd reminds me of like a 70s or 80s NBA guard. He does. Norm Nixon comes to mind. He's got kind of the high hair, you know, the little beard. He just And he has that game, right? He, he can hit from distance in a way that maybe you guys didn't then. But the pull-up and the stuff in the lane and the penetration, it, it really has that look to it. I think he just needs takes off the shooting sleeve and then you really got everything with it. Yeah. <laughs> Pass inside to Brizzy, finishes on the reverse. Central Washington up 21-19, 7.56 left in this first half. Isaac Moreau in the high post. Jonathan Ned, a contested three-pointer. Doesn't matter for Jay yeah. Ned. When you're 6'9", and you got a fairly quick release, it's okay. Jonathan Ned coming off 16 points against Northwest Nazarene. Here's a chance to answer for Central Washington. It's offline from Jordan Clark. And Ned will handle it, lost control of it. Sort of handled it. Yeah, almost handled. Louis Grant Holiday defender ends up on the ground, and that's a blocking foul on the defense. Jordan Clark picks up the personal foul on a block. And that'll send us into our media timeout. Vikings up by one, 22 to 21 when we come back. You're watching Vikings TV. The legacy began in 1973. That was the year NCAA Division II was born. And since the very first day, our division has shaped generations of student athletes with a true sense of academics, athletics, and community. That is five decades of graduations, championships, teamwork, and personal development. 50 years of shaping student athletes into world-class leaders. NCAA Division II, our division, our legacy. Welcome back to Carver Gym. Your Vikings up one in a neck and neck battle. 7.25 left in this first half, and it's been nothing but fun between these two teams shooting it well, and it's just been a back and forth battle between these two teams so far. We have not had a free throw yet. No, we have not. Only four fouls. I probably jinxed that. We'll probably get three <laughs> whistles on the next possession now. But. Both teams have hit 10 shots. Central Washington shooting 45% so far. Vikings just behind them at 43. Central Washington shot extremely well in this last matchup. They shot over 57%. It's still their second 
best shooting performance when these two teams met in Ellensburg earlier this season. As we're back underway out of the media timeout. Vikings up one. Jonathan Ned gonna pull up with a hand in his face. And I've said it a couple times, but I guess well, it just is, doesn't matter. He is looking to score. 10 quick points for John Ned, four of eight from the field. Senior night trying to make it his night. Celebrated before tip off. And now trying to help his team celebrate a victory tonight. Swilly has Darius Gary out. Wraparound pass. Hector gets it inside and Grant Holiday falls on top of Jello Lloyd as a fouls on the floor. A little bit of a dangerous one. It was a nice pass inside. The, the up fake really got Louis Grant Holiday <laughs> off his feet. Oh, and, uh, Here you go, free throws. Jello Lloyd, 95.6%. Not enough free throws to be in the national uh, numbers, but he doesn't miss very often. He has missed two all year. Wow. He's a very talented scorer all around. Of course, we mentioned he was at Western Washington, but even before that, was making an impact in the NWAC. He was the Northern yep. Region MVP in his time at Shoreline. Game, right? Something like that. Yeah, he averaged 26.4 points Ooh. per game for Shoreline Community College. I don't care where you're doing it. That's, that's impressive. Look out. Backdoor cut. Jay Ned with a slam. And a technical foul is called on Jonathan Ned for a bit of taunting after that slam. He was really excited that he just put a poster on it. He might have said a little bit too much. The back door pass there and the cut, just beautiful. Must have been whatever he said to Bradley Swilly. That picks up a technical foul for Jonathan Ned. But I, I get that they don't want this to get out of control. There's yeah. been a lot of incidents in college basketball over the last couple weeks. And, and given that, okay, still on a rivalry night. And Jello Lloyd just missed a free throw. It took, it took him a moment, but we got him. Jello <laughs> Lloyd, his third miss of the year. <laughs> and he oh. missed them both. Both technical free throws missed. So he went up there 45 of 47 for the year and missed just both. Out of nowhere. Hey, you know. He didn't have his teammates there to high five him after There's the first nobody one. Nobody lined up <laughs> no and everything. Threw off the yeah, eyes. Just kind of wow. Depth procession thrown off. Either way, I can the world has stopped spinning apparently. Exactly. It almost have froze over. Lloyd fakes a three, gets past Velp, kicks it to his teammate Hector who bobbled it. Now has two defenders there, and he stepped out of bounds. There were even Viking assistant coaches jumping up off the bench. The excitement of that ball, go the defensive effort by the Vikings there. Central Washington now has eight turnovers in this first half. Western Washington with a three-point lead. 23-26 over the Wildcats. It's Jonathan Ned, the leading scorer, already with 12 tonight. Crosses over. Left side scoop is no good. Bounced around, Gary couldn't get it. Outlet pass quickly up to Lloyd, back oh. to Swilly and Tijon Sane. Kick saving a beauty by Tijon Sane. That's a smart kick. Hey, we're only 20 miles away from this being hockey night in Canada, right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Worthy of Martin Brodeur. Exactly. Tijon Sane. Check this. <laughs> That's oh, one yes. way to stop it. Heads up play. We'll see if the Vikings can keep the Wildcats from scoring still in the possession. They at least they prevented an easy layup, and it's passed out of bounds. Central Washington, a messy first half on this offense. The ninth turnover for the Wildcats, just three for the Vikings. Where Central has kept has balanced that out as they have a 16 to nine edge on the boards, including a 6-3 edge in offensive rebounds. That's why we find ourselves so closely knit together here. Nick Velp on the outside gives it to Jonathan Ned. He's found his look so far in this first half. Tijon Sane is 0 for 1 tonight. Sane top of the key, driving inside, had a double clutch, and he had it blocked and kept possession, so a jump ball that goes in the direction of Central Washington. Yeah, got caught in a little traffic there. He might have had Grant Holiday open the corner, but it wasn't going to be easy to get that pass off as Kai Johnson returns after a fairly extended rest there. He got for for a good chunk of time. We do not see Kai Johnson sit a lot for this Vikings team. 
Well, with the media timeout and everything, in, in actual terms of sitting time, that was about six or seven minutes. Even if it was only about three minutes of game time. He leads the Vikings with 32.9 minutes per game. Kai Johnson does. Here's Central Washington on offense, still trailing by three. Holden has it, finds the cutting oh, down low Swilly. Good offensive possession for Central Washington Locking. to bring it within one. Yeah, they found some creative ways to get in the lane on cuts and drives tonight. And the movement's been very good. Swilly, he's coming off 15 points against Simon Frazier. Louis Grant Holiday, top of the key, defender all over him. Tries to lob it up to Velp, almost put it in, gets it back either way. As we have a stoppage yeah. here. From the I official. Think the question is. Okay, because it was not a shot attempt, but it hit the rim. So do we, and they've decided they did reset the clock, or maybe they thought it was a shot attempt. It hit the rim. But the ball hit the rim. Vikings do keep possession. I asked a referee about that it, earlier this yeah. year. I can't remember what the answer was. I think he said, it was a high school official, and I think he said you would reset the clock. But hit the rim, it hits the rim. It hit the rim. Will Wilson is back out there for the Vikings. Louis Grant Holiday was subbed out. Nick Velt, much smaller defender, works around him. Left hand is too short, though. Couldn't take advantage of the mismatch. So can you throw the ball off the rim and reset the clock? Hey, Theoretically. These are too many loopholes. <laughs> Swilly having a hot night, pulls up Boom. in the mid-range and buries it. Six points for him. Central has been dishing it around. In contrast to the Vikings, where Jonathan Nett has really been the leader on offense. Vikings look to help here. They're going to Jonathan Ned now. Ned all alone, trying to work around a defender. Much contest, and he can't get it. Swilly handles the offense up after grabbing the rebound. Has Nick Velp on him. Speeds around it, but lost control and out of bounds. Another turnover for Central Washington. Now double-digit turnovers here. As we get a timeout on the floor, we'll stretch it to a media. 27-26 here. Vikings trailing by one with 3.58 left in the first half. The Teach and Learning Academy is an organization that's housed in the library and it's where people come to have conversations. They deal with serious issues that have emotional impact in ways that are typically not found in a class. We've talked about diversity and inclusivity on our campus and in our community. It not only enriches my education, but also impacts the ways that I can continue my leadership roles. Welcome back to Sam Carver Gymnasium. Wiku Court with Central Washington holding a 27-26 lead here late in the first half. You see the Viking band there in a, a full Carver Gymnasium. Not a packed Carver Gymnasium, but I think we can say it's, it's approaching full. Definitely one of the best crowds, and what a way it would be to go out as well, having one of the largest yeah, crowds this season in the final home game. Well, certainly our last home game of the year. I don't, after the loss of the women in Billings yeah. on Thursday, it probably knocks them out of contention to host the regional tournament. Men's basketball still trying to get into their conference tournament. Western Washington basically just needs to win out to give themselves the best chance as Kai Johnson with a turnaround. And really, if we have it right, that's about a 90% chance, but not a 100% chance. Vikings need to win out, and Seattle Pacific probably needs to lose twice next week in Alaska. Exactly, as inside, as they finish right back with Mitch Brzee. Will Wilson quickly up for the Vikings. Gets off the defender, but due to an offensive foul, a little bit too much of the shove with the shoulder. As Colby Jeanette hit the ground, took the charge, and it'll be Wildcat ball off Will Wilson's first personal good. foul. Defensive effort by Coleman you had to get in front. And Will got the forearm out there just a little bit to draw the offensive foul. Dribbling it down is Jordan Clark for Central Washington. He's 0 for 2 from the field. 
Swillier, we mentioned, with six points. Brizzy dishes down low. Jeanette goes up through Wilson. Nick Velp swarms in a rebound for Western Washington. Vikings trail by one, under three minutes in the first half. Tijon Sane going quickly past the defender, but he's short on the layup. A rare miss inside from Tijon Sane. And now here comes Swilly oh. off of Nick Velp and a great finish. Good take. Still a one possession lead for Central Washington after that layup. He averages nine, he already has eight. Vikings with two high, Nick Velp. It's a scary pass into Kai Johnson. They'll go to the post now with Jonathan Ned. Ned spinning around, pulls up, too long, tipped around. And Central Washington gains it off a tip from Jeanette. Pass up to Brizzy. Brizzy fakes, gets Velp off his feet and one. Into the defender, he'll go to the line for a chance at three. Good pump fake by Mitch Brzee there. Got Velp off his feet, as you said. Very calmly finished the lay-in. Mitch Brzee is coming off a 4.5 rebound game off the bench against Simon Frazier. Brzee is a transfer from Weber State. Played two games at the Division I level. Six foot nine junior here for Central Washington. 4.8 points, 3.7 rebounds. A good complement to uh, Samad Hector as a backup. They split time about 60-40. Now he might not shoot from three as well as Damian Lillard, but still representing Weber State here for Central Washington in a decent way, making the free throws. Harold the show Arsenal. Look it up. Kai Johnson had it swatted away, but no, a foul instead. Colby Jeanette thought he got a block. Kai Johnson got a bit too much of the arm. As you can see here on the replay, oh, he got smacked in the head. Kai Johnson will head to the line for two free throws. And the first free throws for the Vikings of this game. Kai Johnson, eight points here so far in the first half with a rebound and a block. Knocks down the first of two. Johnson still in this game representing the leading scorer in the Gene Act. With 21.6 points per game, the 12th highest scorer in all of Division II. And knocks down both free throws. Under two minutes now, Central Washington with a four point lead. That one rolled around. Brizzy offensive rebound, gotten away. Grant Holiday tried to hustle for it. Jeanette kept it though for Central Washington. Holden fakes inside, back to Jeanette. Holden tries a three, no good. Grand Holiday defensive rebound for Western Washington. Kai Johnson hesitation, back to the basket. Grant Holiday gets it into the corner. Will Wilson tries his own three, back iron, can't get it. Jeanette rebound, he's running fast for Central Washington but will slow it down. And off to Jordan Clark, a four point lead for the Wildcats. Holden driving kick, Jeanette fake now down the baseline as Kai Johnson spins around him and Jeanette finishes with a layup. And we have a timeout here from Central Washington. It'll be a 30 second timeout. We'll keep things here with a minute two left in the first. Okay, so we talked about Mitch Brzee. You mentioned Damian Lillard. Should herald the show, Arsenault. 1999, so for those less chronically, or chronologically challenged than me, you may not remember this. Weber State beat North Carolina in the opening round of the tournament. It was the first time in 19 years that Carolina lost in the opening round. Harold Arsenault, 36 points, 20 in the second half as Weber State beat North Carolina 76-74. They lost to Florida in the second round, 82-74. He had 32 points. Harold the show Arsenault. He seems like Never a forget that. Oh. That is a name that should hang in. I don't know if it's hanging in the rafters of their gym, but it should be. Big, guys, Big Sky Conference Player of the Year, 22.3 points a game. Under a minute now, Western Washington down six. Central Washington inching forward to a bigger lead. As we close out this first half, Kai Johnson lost control of it. Brizzy stole it. Jeanette secured it. Jeanette in a two-on-one oh. blocked by Will Wilson. What a denial, and it's out of bounds. Vikings wanted it. Oh, look at this. Check the replay. Colby Nadell wants to go up, and, 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 and Will Wilson just says no. And unbelievable. Met him at the peak and blocked that. 
We had Kai Johnson block a fast break layup early on, and now Will Wilson does his own addition. Either way, Wildcats do keep possession off it. They will have a regular offensive possession. Clark driving on Johnson. Clark oh, over Johnson, man. finishes, and one. Kai Johnson picks up a foul, and Jordan Clark will go to the free throw line. Right, this is an 11-2 run over the last three minutes or so here, and it's allowed the Wildcats to open up an eight-point lead and a great little crossover to accelerate into the lane. That was Jordan Clark's first basket, has a chance to add with it, with the free throw here, and he cannot. Rolls away, and Kai Johnson grabs the rebound. So with just about a second and a half difference between uh, game and shot clock, see if the Vikings work for one shot here. Looks like they will. They'll spread the floor, maybe go high pick and roll with Isaac Moreau, or maybe just let Kai Johnson go himself. Johnson's got 10 points in this first half. Jonathan Ed out there with 12 as well. Two hot scorers. Johnson passes out of a shot. Grant Holiday inside up with oh, two nice. bounces and follows. They inbound it out of bounds. Mm -hmm. and well, they're going to reset this clock. They it are. was out with a half second to go. The clock expired, but the ball looked like it was out of bounds, and the ref was signaling for the clock to stop. We will see how much time they put. With our angle, we could see... The ball coming at us, first yeah. of all, and the clock is like right behind it. It's about a half. Yeah, and I think probably about a half second. They will look at an official replay of it to determine the time. Vikings will have the ball on the sideline as Tony Dominguez draws up his inbounds play here. You'd have to, has to be a, it depends on the clock, I guess, but most likely a tip up. Uh, if you get a half second, you can catch and shoot. The rule is you need four tenths. You need four tenths for a catch and shoot. If Derek right? Fisher is out here. So, so if you can if you can get it on a on a clean catch where you're going up, that's fine. Um, yeah, less than four, you've got to tip it. But and as you said, we've seen some magic between these two teams in their history of games. So you never know. Western Washington has yep. pulled off some fun buzzer beaters. As there have been a few, and there have been a few the other way, unfortunately. <laughs> exactly. As well. uh, you're gonna have that when you have such a long history yeah, rival. Played 267 times. Yeah. You're gonna have a few and. Uh, some of the rivalries, and the one that that I remember the most, the year that I mean, it was the the 89-90 season, where they played five times. They played twice in the regular season. Played a two out of three district championship series. The road team won all five games, and Western had a 13 point lead in the second half of the last deciding game. Lost in overtime, and Central Washington went on to the national NAI national semifinals that year. So these were two of the best teams in all of the NAI, and they just went hammer and tong every time. And it was like every rebound was a, nobody could get a clean rebound <laughs> because every rebound was contested. Both teams had big 6'9 centers, Van Jones for Central and, uh, and, and Ed Briggs, the best shot blocker we've ever had here at Western. And, and what's the ruling? Now it's... Point nine. point nine. That's plenty of time. Wow. That's Damian Lillard time. Oh, there you he go. He got that shot up against the Rockets with point nine. So here we go. So this is, you can get a really clean catch and shoot. You probably can't get a dribble, but, but you can get a really clean look here. And they will have it on the baseline, not the sideline, excuse me. Inbound. Will Wilson just took a little bit too much get time. That much time. Exactly. Put a dribble on the ground. He couldn't. So halftime coming up. 38 to 32 Central Washington with a six point lead as Isaac Morrow makes his debut on the big screen here. We're gonna get an interview with Adam Race as well as AJ Allbritton though here down on the court. Coming up next here on Vikings TV. Adam Rice alongside A.J. Albritton here. A.J., defensive intensity was high in that first half. You guys forced 11 turnovers, central shooting just over 50%. What would you see on the defensive end? Yeah, uh, we are D'ing up. Um, I think 38 uh, would be because of offensive rebounds. Um, so we are D'ing up. We just eliminate second chance points, and they'd probably have even less. Uh, but, yeah, we're doing a good job D'ing up. Energy's good. We started off the game with good energy, so that was good. 32 points in the first half for you guys. What are you seeing offensively? Uh, offensively, uh, we just need to get to the rim a little bit more. 
Uh, I think if we get to the rim a little bit more, that's the difference in the foul count. They had, you know, two fouls. We're taking, you know, perimeter shots, which we can make them. We did early on. So just that balance of that shot, most importantly, getting to the rim uh, so we can put the, you know, rest in position to call foul. Uh, so hopefully we get to the rim a little bit better in this second half, and we'll see the difference there. AJ, hey thank you. Good luck in the second half. Don't go away. We'll be right back in 15 minutes for the second half of action here in Carver Gym. Vikings basketball. Now it's time to get to our recognition. First, we'll start off with our senior band members. We'll start with Emma Martin. Rebecca Allen. Luke Kane. Alex Baumer. Luke. Takeyoshi. Elaine. Nicolotis and T. Rogers. Now we've got some senior national champions to recognize. First up, Madison Durkee. Next, we have Kelly Benson, Desiree McComber, Aline Salacido, Darren Campbell. Co-captain Vivian Ho. And our three-year co-captain, Kayana Miller. Fans, one more time, give it up for our senior band members and senior cheer members.
Welcome back to Carver Gym. Second half about to get started between the Central Washington Wildcats and your Western Washington Vikings. Your Vikings trail by six at the half, but it's been a fun back and forth battle between these two teams. Central Washington just having the edge as we enter our second half. Butch, take us through some stats. Hey, the leading scorer in the game, Jonathan Ned on senior night, 12 points. Kai Johnson has added 10. They've got 22 of the Vikings, 32. If we go to the other end, a little more balanced. Uh, Swilly with eight, Lloyd with eight, and off the bench, Mitch Frizee with 11, going five of six from the field. A, a very good half for him. We see the, the stats here. It kind of things have operated a different way. Central has shot 51% from the field. The Vikings just 41.2. Neither team shooting well from three-point range. Central just one of eight. Western just two of eight. Uh, the big difference has been on the boards. 24-12 to Central, as you see, but that's been balanced out by the turnovers. 11-5, uh, the Wildcats have turned it over more. Assists pretty even, steals pretty even. Uh, the Wildcats were able to get a burst late in the half that allowed them to open up that 38-32 lead. But it's been a fun half. It's been a, a crowd of about 1,800. It sounds like it's going to be announced as and uh, a game and, and, and a noise level uh, worthy of this rivalry. Something that A.J. Albritton mentioned in the halftime interview was offensive rebound and second chance points. There was 11 to four second chance points in favor of Central Washington off eight to three offensive rebounds. And as a whole, Western Washington looking to improve their rebounding in this second half to help keep them close and take advantage of other facets of the game where they are holding an advantage over the Central Washington team like the turnovers we have mentioned. For Central Washington, we talked about earlier in the game, they just need one game to clinch their spot in the postseason. Will it come tonight? That is left to be seen. Western Washington has just two games left, including this one. Most games in the GNAC, or at least most teams in the GNAC have three games, including today, left on their schedule. With the Vikings, just two. Yeah, They'll the, play next Saturday against Simon Fraser. Yeah, the travel partner week for Western. It's a very strange schedule that the Vikings and Simon Fraser get where you get the opening week of the season, you get the, extra, the the game off in the final week of the season. So you don't get the rest that other teams do. And at some point, it'd be nice if the GNAC would address that. The first week is because Simon Fraser's in finals week earlier than other schools, but why they can't balance the other one out in the middle of the year would, would be helpful. Back underway, Vikings on offense. Jonathan Ned too strong on a three-pointer. Vikings get an offensive rebound for Will Wilson, and they'll reset. Tishon Sane. Out there dribbling with his left hand, wrapping around, gives it to Kai Johnson, who's going to get to the paint by himself and finish with a foul and one. Yep. Hey, electric start for the Vikings already in this second half. Jello Lloyd. Lloyd was there, but he was, I think, well within the, uh, the arc. So Kai Johnson heading to the free throw line. He's two for two tonight has a chance to take, as he does, the leading scoring of the night, as you would expect, leading scorer in the GNAC. Vikings cut it to a one possession lead. For Central Washington, we mentioned, haven't been able to hit the three ball down in that first half. That's just been their season. They're the eighth worst in the GNAC when it comes to shooting behind the arc. But definitely make up in their defensive efforts. Yeah, just 32 and a half percent. That one missed by Maverick Sanders on the corner of the iron. Tijon Sane up through the middle for, for Western Washington and will pull back now, work around a screen from Nick Velp. Almost slipped. Velp has it though and will hand off Will Wilson. They go down low, Nick Velp looking to go to work. He had a double-double on Thursday and he finishes there. Very nice, got all the way around to the back side of the rim and laid it in. So going back to the end of the half, a 7-0 run for Western. Nick Velp. Put some numbers to it, 10 points and 12 rebounds against Northwest Nazarene on Thursday. He's four and four tonight. Jello Lloyd into traffic, and Kai Johnson might have got a block on that. Offensive rebound, though, by Sanders, and a good put up through Jonathan Ned. Vikings going quick. Will Wilson to the other side off his own backboard. Got it back and finishes with a put back. Oh, great outlet pass, and finding Will Wilson ahead of the pack. Bradley Swilly around, fade away, mid-range jump shot is good. And Swilly is feeling himself. Second highest score for the Wildcats tonight. 
Driving kick from Kai Johnson. Tijon Sane outside. Sane trying to get rolling. He's 0 for 3 from the field. Sane around a screen on the left side. Hesitation now into the paint. Kicks Jonathan Ed, fakes a 3. Ned to the left. Outside Wilson. Wilson on sector. Hector, he spins around him and misses on a fadeaway. That's a shot that we've seen Will Wilson be able to knock down multiple times this season, but just unable there. Drive in from Lloyd, Ooh. and the floater is good. I like this guy's game. Hey. I, I regret that we didn't get to see him <laughs> sooner. <laughs> I regret that he didn't end up in a Western Washington jersey for us to actually see him. Well, there may be a photo of him in one. Oh, yeah, we've got that. A couple of them. I saw a couple of them researching. And we have a foul on the floor here. That'll go on Bradley Swin Swilly. And take a look again at Jello Lloyd. No backboard on that floater, just pure arc. If you put it on the backboard from there, that's really impressive. Kai Johnson, two defenders, fades away and hey, buries it. I can do that. Exactly right no, back I at you. I can't, but Kai no, can. Kai can. Lloyd quickly for CWU. Oh. Central with another three-pointer, and it's Jello Lloyd. Vikings down by six, hanging around. They would like to retake a lead that they handled for the most part in that first half, their last lead. Game with 3.38 in the first half as Nick Velt finishes that. He got stripped as he tried to go up, recollected, laid it home. Nick Velp now four points in the second half after just two in the first. Sanders driving and gets it through the help defender as Hector finishes on a slam. It is a parade to the basket at both ends right now. Tijon Sane around the defenders, three Wildcats there, and they all ran into Tijon Sane. He ends up on the ground, and he'll shoot free throws after a hard landing. You had Hector behind him, Sanders helping over, Lloyd on his left hip, and they gave the foul to Maverick Sanders. Tijon Sane will shoot two free throws. He's not saying we mentioned struggled, struggling to get it going tonight. Maybe getting to his favorite spot, the free throw line, could help him start it as he makes the first of two. Isaac Morrow coming in for Jonathan Ned, or excuse me, for Will Wilson. Tijon saying an 89.9 free throw percent shooter entering this game. Makes both of them. Lead is cut down to four. Lloyd with a sham god. Passes outside to Kevin Holden. Sane guarding him deep. Holden moving to his right, back out to Lloyd. Lloyd with KJ there, pulls up in Kai Johnson's face, can't get it off the right side. Kai Johnson handling the offense, looking for an outlet pass up. He'll take it himself, spin around and has it ripped away, stolen by Swilly. Swilly in transition, dunking it down. And that was all the freshman Bradley Swilly, the steal and the slam to bring the lead back to six for Central Washington. Seeing into the corner, Kai Johnson goes to the baseline, reverses, is too strong on it as Hector grabs it. Wanted a foul, but he can't get it. Instead, Kevin Holden draws a foul in transition. That'll stop the push from Central Washington for the time being. We talked earlier as we go to the break here Central League 51-45. We talked earlier about some of the great moments in this, in this rivalry. And we have one from 10 years ago. It is one of the great moments in, in Western history. And uh, our, our crew is going to roll that for us here the last 30 seconds of the 2014 game here. All of a sudden, he's got his average at 17. Here we go. McLaughlin down two. Finds Pollard underneath to tie it with 2.7. What a pass, what a shot. Woodward from half court. Got it! Unbelievable! Western Storm on the court, they've got it! That is. And Richard Woodworth here tonight. You see him in the stand sitting next to Brad Jackson. And uh, I, want, I think that's Chris Mitchell. Played in the national championship team along with Richard Woodworth. Yeah, Rich, a great guard here in those wonderful Viking teams in the early part of the 2010s that won the national championship in 2012 and reached the national semifinals in 2013. That is 
as good a moment as I've ever seen in this gym. Uh, and I've seen some other game winners in two, but for a guy to hit one from behind the half court line and so incredibly calmly, that's not forced. He pulls up yeah. and shoots that thing from yeah. behind the half court line. The strength to do that is remarkable. And uh, the mob scene after is just amazing. Great stuff from Richard Woodward. Ten but years ago this week. Is Brad Jackson still at Steve Home? Uh, yeah, he coached again this year. I saw Brad at a high school game today, actually. So Brad is evergreen, man. The man does just not age at all. <laughs> Central Washington on the baseline, inbounds it to Samad Hector. They hold a six-point lead. Jordan Clark on the outside. Clark lost control of it, and that's going to be a double dribble. He was trying to pass outside to Sanders. And he touched it once again. That's a turnover from Central Washington. These two teams coming out of the break with some hot shooting. We have a Brad Jackson play here. Oh, well they, they were going to run Houston, but they're not in it. Instead, Louis Grand Holiday has the Vikings working around the perimeter. Big man gives it to KJ. Pick and roll. Nick Velp now with the smaller Swindley on him. Velp trying to put his back to the basket, has the ball tipped and still gets it to go. Rolls it off the front rim for Western Washington. It's a 47 to 51 game here in Carver Gym. Pull up, Lloyd can't get it. Tipped out of bounds by, I believe, Jello Lloyd and yes, it'll be Western Washington ball. Both teams shooting 60%. With 14.31 left in the second half. One last note on Brad Jackson. He was my old neighbor up the street through for many years. And so when COVID hit, I went and got a bunch of old DVRs and things of Brad of old games picked out. So in the early weeks of COVID, when nothing was open, my son and I watched old Viking classic games. Uh -huh. Picked out some, you know, some classic ones and, and watched it. Oh, it was so fun. And that's why you're the color guy. Sane inside has it denied by Rizzi. Jordan Clark for the Wildcats. The lone man, Kai Johnson, got a hand on it. Tipped around. Moreau in the corner. Thinks it's Western ball, but instead it's Central. I think that's right. And I think so, too, as Moreau did not. He could have maybe made an effort for it in the corner. Chose to let it drift out of bounds, and instead Wildcats keep it on their we'll, side. We'll get a look here. First of all, the, the black reaching out with the second hand there by Kai Johnson. And you know oh, what? Isaac Moreau is right. I apologize. Argument. Yep. He, had, he had that call correct. But it was bang, bang. I, it fooled us. Yeah, yeah, fooled everyone probably. Officials, us. Didn't fool Isaac Moreau, though, who no. saw it right in front of him. High post, Mitch Brizzy. Wraps around a teammate. Gives it Clark. Pick and roll back to Brizzy on a reverse. It's too short. Tipped up into the net. Isaac Moreau secures it for Western. Guy right, Johnson on the left side. KJ with the bigger defender on him. Gives it Nick Velp inside. Height advantage, two oh, defenders there, and he soft. finished over him. Nick Velp having a very good second half, now up to double digits. It might have been easier to put it off the board from there, but that was a great finish. Brizzy on a lob bank. Answers right back for Central Washington. He's got 13. He averages about 4.8. Off the bench in 12 minutes, 13 points. Pick and pop, Nick Velp. Big men trying to go back at it, and that one hits off the shot clock. It'll be out of bounds. Jonathan Ned checking back in for the Vikings. Kevin Holden in for the Wildcats. Isaac Moreau will sit down. And subbing out is Bradley Swilly for Central Washington. 13.07 on the game clock left. Central Washington holding on to a narrow four-point lead. Largest lead of the game is an eight-point lead held by the Wildcats. Three from Jordan Clark, rolls around. Nick Velp grabs a rebound. Vikings going to go quick with Tijon Sane. Grant Holiday on the right side. Holiday gives it back to Sane now. Sending atop the offense in the high right. Around the wing, Sane goes to Ned. Ned pulls up for three off to the right side. Rebounded by Brizzy. Holden does a good job getting through the defenders in transition. Takes it himself. Coast to coast is blocked, though, by KJ. And now here the Vikings go. Left side, Grant Holiday. Rattles around Ooh. and out. Jeanette defensive rebound. The roof would have come off this place if that had gone in. 
Kai Johnson started that whole run with three blocks now tonight off of that defensive stop once again. Kevin Holden led in scoring for Central Washington on Thursday, but he has no points in his fifth start in this one. McNeil for three, way off onto the right side. Rebound, though, by Jeanette and an easy putback on the second chance. Another offensive rebound for Central Washington, now holding an 11-5 advantage on the offensive glass. And an overall 31-20 rebounding advantage. Nick Velp, two defenders there, gets fouled and rolls it in. A little bit of some dramatics on it as whether or not it was going to fall. A Nothing. full spin through three defenders. As we go to the break, Central leading 55-51. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Welcome back to Carver Gym. It's senior night for Jonathan Ed, Darius, Gary, and Isaac Morrow, the last time that they'll get to play here at their home gym. And for the longest tenured one, Isaac Morrow spent all four years here. Jonathan Ned has seen the last two years here. Well, Darius Gary spent three. Isaac Morrow actually played at Concordia of Portland. He is one of the school that closed, played his freshman year then, then transferred here. He is one of two players left playing that played at Concordia. There is also one at Alaska Anchorage. And uh, so kind of an interesting little note there. There's been some fun journeys, I would say, in this senior class. You have Jonathan Ned, of course, was at the junior college level, was the number 15 recruit in JUCO yep. at Eastern Florida State, and then made the jump all the way up to Division I, played for the University of Georgia, and now these last yeah, two years with Western. rotation guy at the University of Georgia. Darius Gary, Portland Community College, as that one is kept by Brizzy. A steal attempt by Velt, but a turnover nonetheless as it goes out of bounds on a wayward pass. Yeah, Darius Gary, a guy that, that overcame at least one knee injury, maybe two, you know, in his time before he came to Western, so. And he was a ridiculous scorer at Portland Community College. Yes. 23 points per game, and makes sense when you see that jumper. Into the corner, Ned, corner three-pointer. Offline and rebounded by McNeil. Still a three-point lead for the Wildcats. 55-52, and a down low pass to Brizzy, and one. Up off the glass, he's got a chance for one more. So what's happening here is, is, is it's pick and roll, and sometimes Nick Brizzy is, actually he's just slipped the screen really before it's even gotten there this time. And he is finding lanes to get into the paint. The, 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 the entry passes have been excellent. Oh, and he's having a field day, 15 points. And as that one rolls around, it will not go in. So it'll be a five-point game. Jonathan Ned is subbed out. Will Wilson is in for Western Washington. And that one's stolen away. Louis Grant Holiday tried to get it back on a pass inside. Central Washington gets a turnover. And now it is Kevin Holden. He'll go to the hot hand in Brizzy. Brizzy inside over. Nick Velb rolling in and out. And Nick Velp grabs a rebound. So Velp might have got the lucky roll, but Brizzy could not get it as well. Grant Holiday, Euro through, could not get it. And through all the noise, that is going to be a foul on the floor. Yeah, did you hear the whistle? I didn't hear I it. I did not hear the whistle. We Everybody had whole, stopped. Well, the whole, the whole home bench thought he was going to yam that thing on him, so they started jumping out and screaming. But It is way, noisy in here tonight. And uh, I was going, why isn't there a foul on that? No, there is a foul. Yeah, there is. He'll shoot two free throws. Maybe Grant Holiday has been a rotational player off the bench, coming in as a redshirt freshman transfer from Seattle University. Yeah, a 
Couple years at Eastside Catholic. Again, came over here for that purpose, to play high school basketball. And, uh, left behind the family He's back in England to do it. So He's seen his fair share of competitive basketball, competed the 2023 FIBA European Championship on the U20 team, representing Great Britain. And he brings this game to now a three-point difference. 10-25 left in the second half. Wildcats working around the perimeter. Swilly left side now, Hector. Holden dished it to Hector. Here's Hector on Wilson. Some odd Hector's too short on his first layup. Tips it around, and eventually a Viking is able to get it. Isaac Moreau grabs the rebound. Kai Johnson spinning, faking, jumping into the defender and can't get the end one after he got Colby Jeanette off his feet. More free throws coming for Western Washington. Kai Johnson will go to the line. He's coming off a second team all GNAC season last year and as we approach the end of the GNAC regular season, we'll likely see his name on a first team and definitely in line for potentially a name to be thrown into the hat of a GNAC MVP as well, although there are some very talented players around this conference. Ty Johnson misses that free throw, almost Ooh. got it back, but stolen away by Central Washington. Swilly settles down, and Kevin Holden will set up the offense for Central Washington. Holden, double team on him, Moreau wraps it up. Lost it. Louis Grant Holiday secures it. Western Washington with Sane. Tijon Sane without a dribble needs a teammate to help him out, and Grant Holiday will as he hands it back directly to Tijon Sane. Sane playing point guard. High above the perimeter. Goes quickly now. Kick out to Will Wilson on a bad pass. Wilson keeps it though. Wilson wrap around back into Sane. Sane's on the ground, kept it alive though after oh. going to a knee. He's gonna pull up for three. Bang! Oh! oh. Tie game, 57-57. Wasn't a great offensive possession, but Tijon Sane made it happen. Inside McNeil puts it up, and a wow. tough basket to answer. That is a tough answer, wow. Sane gonna go quickly inside high off the glass and one. Tijon Sane is fired up. A battle back and forth. Tijon Sane has a chance for one more. So a moment ago he didn't have a field goal now. Yeah. A three-pointer. A chance for the and one, the, the old-fashioned three-pointer. And oh, he, he can't get it. it. Yeah, lane tied at 59. So we're still all knotted up as this game has just been a fun one. Neither team holding a large lead for too long. Western Washington has battled it back into a tie now in the second half. And Swilly is fouled on a three-point shot. And that one goes on T. John or excuse me, Kai Johnson picks up his third personal foul. Just to amplify your point here, neither team has had a double-digit lead tonight. Western had an early lead of seven points a couple times. And uh, the Wildcats had a lead of eight points late in the first half. We're in the second half. It has been very tight. There have been four lead changes. Swilly back rim on his second attempt. And he's shooting three as he was behind the arc when he was fouled. Kai Johnson remaining on the floor with three personal fouls. He is a 90% free throw shooter as well. So Vikings getting some breaks with good shooters missing yeah. free throws. He, oh, my. He, he missed. Okay. This may be a record. Two 90% free throw shooters coming in, both missing Back to back at some row. point. Exactly. Vikings will take it. They'll look to take advantage. He's on Sane was trying to get oh. another one put back by Louis Grant Holiday. And a Viking lead on the tip-in by Louis Grant Holiday. Vikings are back in front over Central Washington. 8-12 left in our game. A battle of rival schools. Hector out of bounds. What's the call? It's Western ball. 15 turnovers for the Wildcats. Yeah, Hector lost it and it bounced off of his foot and out of bounds as, as Jello Lloyd returns for the Wildcats. Lloyd with 13 points in 17 minutes. 
Vikings Man. shooting 52% from the field in the second half. Central shooting 47. Dijon Sin will take it slow, give it to Isaac Moreau. Moreau with a dribble, hands off back to Sain. Hector switches on to Sain. Got the matchup they wanted here. Let's see if they can get something out of it. Sain into the corner. Grant Holiday fakes it. Steps back, three-pointer off the front rim. Hector oh. hustles down a rebound over Isaac Moreau. Tough rebound. Lloyd, backdoor pass, and a good finish by Jeanette. As we have a timeout called by the Central Washington side. It is going to stretch to our media timeout. So a 61-62 ball game. Central Washington up by one with 7.35 when we come back. Nine and six Central Washington, seven and three Western Washington. These two rival schools with three spots left in the conference championships are battling it out in a game that could go on to help determine those future standings with just minimal games left on the schedule for every team in the GNAC. It has been a fun one here in Carver Gym. Nice crowd cheering on the Vikings. They've been on their feet as the Vikings have rallied back and trailed by just one after taking the lead for a little bit. And with 7.35 out of our media timeout, Vikings will have the ball. T. John Sain, Louis Grant Holiday, Isaac Moreau, Kai Johnson, and Will Wilson on the floor for Western Washington. Gavin Holden out there guarding T. John Sain. Will Wilson is guarded by Colby Jeanette. Back to Sain outside. Sain around Isaac Moreau has Hector switched on to him. Kai Johnson goes down low. He's got the mismatch against Holden. Works through it and off the glass. A good patient finish. He knew he was strong enough to get through the defender. Laid it off the board and in. Lead changes hands again. A senior Isaac Moreau, four points, four rebounds after that basket. Kevin Holden goes quickly, tipped away. T. Johnson saves it. Kai Johnson grabs it. Johnson going quickly. KJ coast to coast into the corner. Grant Holiday wrapping around, has it ripped away, but off of a foul. And the foul is on Bradley Swilly. Well, one of the emerging things here is that's the eighth team foul on Central, just three for the Vikings. And there is a timeout on the floor. We'll keep things here for this one just at a break. Why don't we uh, take advantage of that to update you on scores around the GNAC tonight? Uh, a couple games this afternoon. The men's side, as we've talked about, Seattle Pacific knocking off the top team in the conference, MSU Billings, 91-80, to which, as we said, puts Western in a precarious spot. They have to win out, and probably Seattle Pacific's going to have to lose both games uh, for the Vikings to get into that final spot, at least ahead of Seattle Pacific. Um, Alaska Anchorage, 72, Western Oregon, 51. And there are a couple of games being in progress this evening. NNU is at Simon Fraser and Alaska Fairbanks at St. Martin's. Uh, three teams have clinched. Uh, Billings, St. Martin's, and NNU. Central uh, probably could clinch if they won tonight, and we'll, and we'll go from there. On the women's side, let's get you updated on what the Vikings did today. Western 66, Seattle Pacific 55. Mason Oberg, 19 points at five three-pointers. Brooke Walling at 17 points. Uh, so the Vikings... Or, or, or clinched a spot in the GNAC tournament. They still remain two games behind MSU Billings, who uh, crushed Simon Fraser today, 80-59, to and have clinched at least a share of the conference title at 15-1. Uh, Central Washington also beat NNU, 81-69. There's think about that. We've talked about how that team is very two-headed with, with Kai and Huerta. They had all five starters in double figures today, did the Wildcats. That's different. 
That is a rarity for men's basketball, at least Central Washington, Alaska Anchorage, and Seattle Pacific are the teams that are quote unquote in right now. And what they're rooting for are all the teams that are in if they would have those last three spots are just Western Washington and Alaska Fairbanks losses. Alaska Fairbanks in a tough game against St. Martin's. If they are to lose, Alaska Fairbanks will be officially eliminated from the tournament and Western Washington needs a win here tonight as well. Brizzy, high post near the elbow. Colby Jeanette, guarded by Moreau. Kai Johnson tipped to loose. Brizzy saves it though. Jeanette gets it. 10 on the shot clock outside to Lloyd. Lloyd with Will Wilson there. Step back for a long two off to the left side. Louis Grant Holiday gets the board. Oh, and a chance finally for a team to get more than a possession lead here if the Vikings can get a bucket in this trip. Sane on the left side, down low, Louis Grant Holiday. Holiday with the smaller defender, Lloyd on him. Holiday, kick out. Tijon Singh, Give it back out. To him. Uh, now he's cleared. Eight seconds for Sane. Sane gets it going inside. Outside, KJ for three. Too short. Oh. Grabbed by Kai Johnson, a put back dunk. Nobody in the house knew better that that was short than KJ because he went right after it, caught it in stride, up and pack it home. Kai Johnson, 17 points, four rebounds, four assists, and three blocks. What a night he's having. A stat sheet stuffer, as Clark Kellogg used to say. He is locked in. And the Vikings with a five-point lead. Jordan Clark, Moreau, blocked it out of bounds. 16 seconds on the shot clock for Central Washington. Yeah, look at this again. If you can see him on the edge of the camera, he is immediately crashing. And everybody just kind of cleared. I don't yeah. know what happened there, but the it was a parted. lane for him to just charge through. Yeah, it was. No box out on the shooter. Brizzy can't get a hook. Gets it back. He's short and is fouled. Mitch Brizzy has been all over the offensive glass today, and he's going to get his third and fourth free throws of the night as Isaac Moreau picks up his first personal foul. Brizzy was one for two in his last trip to the free throw line. And he is the leading scorer for Central Washington tonight. 15 points, seven rebounds, now 16 with that free throw. And a chance to even tie for the game lead with Kai Johnson if he knocks this one. And it rolls in and out. So Western Washington with a four-point lead. Yeah, he's matched his, career, his season high. He had 16 against Alaska Anchorage earlier this year. Defender fell to the ground. That was Lloyd. Vikings have a five on four. Now the defender's back in action. Isaac Moreau through the contact. Senior night, six points for Isaac Moreau. Jello Lloyd kicks out. Jeanette, Jeanette around Grant Holiday. Jeanette off the defender and answers right back. Vikings still with a two possession lead. Which team will have the run that finishes off this game will be what's gonna determine it. Vikings had a great run against Northwest Nazarene. Here's Will Wilson oh. in the corner. Three pointer is good. Oh, and set up by Kai Johnson was fantastic. Getting into the lane and kicking that ball out. And Tijon Sane picks up a foul off of Jello Lloyd. Second. So Second personal for Tijon Sane. The Vikings have opened up a seven point lead here and as tight as this game has been, that seems like a lot. It Not does. just their biggest lead of the night. And on the other side of things, the biggest lead for Central was just eight points. Central will look to answer Jello Lloyd. Jordan Clark into the key, slipped. Got it to the corner, Swilly for three, too short. Tipped around offensive rebound from Clark. Lloyd with a shot clock reset. Lloyd off of Tijon Sane who hit the ground on a charge. Now I don't know if he was hit that hard, but he sure as heck sold that thing. <laughs> he hit the ground crazy. I need to see what happened there. Tijon Sane, it looked like it was a lot worse than maybe it actually was. Maybe took a couple acting classes here at Western Washington. <laughs> a little bit of an improv session from Tijon Sane. We'll take it. That'll be a second foul for Jello Lloyd. Central Washington is going to press. Tijon Sane as the Vikings break it. He is poked from the back. 
And Swilly gets a personal foul on the hand check from behind. That is his fourth foul, and he's been very good tonight. 13 points, six attempts from the field, five rebounds. Vikings will go to the line with 10 personal fouls on Central Washington. So he knocks down the first of two. Zane having a much improved second half. Has really gotten, you could even say in the second half of the second half, he really got rolling. <laughs> it's true. And he knocks down both free throws from Western Washington. Lead up to nine. Biggest lead of the game by either side. This is a, a 13 to three run for Western to overcome a deficit and take a nine point lead. Lloyd off a wrap around. Zane keeps on Lloyd. Now Jeanette around Grant Holiday. Jeanette into the post. Lloyd fakes it. He'll take it this time and rolls in and out. Kai Johnson wrapping in a rebound. And he'll slow things down. Swilly's going to press him. Yeah, we're inside four minutes. Even with four fouls, he's going to stay in the game. He will guard Kai Johnson, the Vikings' premier scorer. Johnson gets around him. Johnson inside. Lost his dribble. He's in the post. 11 on the shot clock as they pass out to T. John Sane. Sane with seven. Sane around Morrow. Into two defenders. Has it blocked by Brizzy. Secured by Jordan Clark and Central Washington gets it. Swilly. Transition. Jay too short. Brizzy offensive rebound up through Will Wilson. Tipped into the corner. Isaac Morrow grabs it this time. And can't get the pass to Kai Johnson through his legs. And it'll be Central Washington ball. As we'll get a break here. Media timeout on the floor. But your Vikings up big. 74, 65, a nine point lead with 2.59. We'll be right back. The Teaching Learning Academy is an organization that's housed in the library and it's where people come to have conversations. They deal with serious issues that have emotional impact in ways that are typically not found in a class. We've talked about diversity and inclusivity on our campus and in our community. It not only enriches my education, but also impacts the ways that I can continue my leadership roles. Welcome back to Sam Carver Gymnasium, Wiku Court, Vikings 74-65 lead with 2.59 to play. Hey, this is our last home game of the season and uh, just want to say a few things. I want to first of all thank John Offholt and his incredible crew in the booth and the camera people that just do such an amazing job with multiple cameras and replays. I want to thank Jeff Evans for all the numbers and data that he provides us. I want to thank you and Adam Race for all the great work they do. I get to work with great people. We hear a lot from people all over the place. We get lots of feedback about these about these webcasts. And we thank you for listening through the course of the season. It has been an absolute blast to do this with you and with everybody. And, and you can still hear Zen and Adam uh, in the softball season. And they do volleyball and soccer in the fall as well. But for me, uh, this is the last one of the year. And I just want to thank a moment to thank everybody for the incredible work that gets done here. It is a blast. Hey, and thank you, Butch, for being the best color commentator to sit by as a play-by-play -play guy. Off the timeout, Central Washington missed that three-pointer. And the Vikings secure it here. A big possession coming. 240, final game of the home regular season for the Vikings. One more left on the schedule away at Simon Frazier. But this one means the most for the seniors and the most for the fans. Rivalry night, Vikings with a nine-point lead. Johnson for three, got Ooh. it! And that might be the old Larry Bird dagger there. You hit that late, well-timed three. Vikings up 12 now with 217. A huge three from Kai Johnson. 20 points once again in the 20-point column as a foul is called on Tijon Sane. That'll be his third. Kai Johnson with the guts to let it fly in the moment. And he just buries it, his first three-pointer of the game. So not a bad foul as it doesn't send, like saying, as it doesn't send the Wildcats to the line. They will be in the bonus on the next one, however. 16 fouls for Western Washington, 10 for Central. Inside oh. Jordan Clark, a good finish off the contact from Wilson. Central Washington going to press on the inbounds. They get it into Kai Johnson. Under two minutes now, 10-point game. 
Kai Johnson double team, not where you want to be in this corner. Wrap around though to Tijon Sane, nicely done. Yeah. And Tony Dominguez is going to call a timeout. That's a good timeout. First Kai Johnson trapped and got out of it, but then Tijon Sane trapped in a nearly as dangerous spot right on the half court line. Good timeout by Tony Dominguez. A minute 47 to go, and hey, the Vikings still have three timeouts remaining, so that it, 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 two timeouts as that one just clicks off now. So at this point, and you see the that kick out there earlier by Johnson to get Wilson to three. Kai Johnson, 20 points, five rebounds, five assists, three block shots. I say three block shots for a guard, but hey, as we've noted before, Kai Johnson leads this team in block shots. This year, he just a little bit under one a game. Just a couple ticks and uh, having just a fantastic season and a fantastic night. 13 points for Nick Velp, 12 for John Ned, 9 each for Tijon Sane and Will Wilson, 8 for Louis Grant Holiday off the bench, and Isaac Morrow completing the scoring with 6. For Central, uh, Swilly has 13, Jello Lloyd with 13, but Mitch Frizee tying his season high with 16. He's had a great night, uh, 8 for Colby Jeanette, 5 for McNeil, 4 each for Clark. Sanders and Hector. Who can come up big in the clutch. Central Washington needing to come back now. Isaac Moreau for Western Washington. Wraparound pass. Oh, Will Wilson. Look. Back up to 12 for the Vikings. McNeil outside. Brizzy's on the floor. They pass it to him as he gets up. Brizzy gets Moreau off his feet and gets an and one. So as we said, he he had a season high. This now ties his career high of 18 that he got against Simon Fraser last season. So he'll have an opportunity here to, uh, to get that career high squared away as Isaac Moreau comes off by a great performance for him. Six points, six rebounds in 20 minutes, and the energy that he always brings. There's been a remarkable bench piece, spark plug that the Vikings are going to miss, and one is converted. And Mitch Brizzy, and he will be subbed off as well for Maverick Sanders, the starting big man in this game for Central Washington. Sanders with four points re-enters for CWU. Nine-point deficit, Vikings holding the lead. Grant Holiday off the inbounds pass has it tipped out by Central, and they'll do it again. Colby Jeanette, the one pressuring. Grant Holiday can run the baseline. Minute 28 left in the game. They get it to Kai Johnson, double team in the corner, pass it up to T. John Sane, and they'll cross the half court line. Exactly what the Vikings needed. Work clock now. Let's see if Central will foul. It doesn't look like they're going to foul on this possession. So Vikings going to drain this shot clock as much as they can. Kai Johnson, 10 seconds, dish off to Will Wilson, has it blocked though by Sanders, kept alive, Johnson, double clutch, oh. and one! Oh my! <laughs> now I'll admit, when he went, I'm thinking, oh, run clock, run yeah, clock. Yeah, me too. Oh, never mind, great play. Why not? Doesn't matter how many defenders oh. they were. What a beautiful finish. Oh, a signature night. From Kai Johnson, and hey, you, when, if the Vikings can get in, what we've seen in these two week, in these two games, hey, nobody's going to want to play this team. This would Agreed. be a very dangerous six seed. Western Washington has had close games with St. Martin's this year. They've had oh. wins against Northwest Nazarene, Alaska Anchorage. All the teams you look at the top of the conference, they've. You either gave them a run for their money or beating them. We should note the Western women played at Seattle Pacific at 4 o'clock today. They are actually back in the gymnasium here, <laughs> back in the corner over by the door, and, the and actually walking into the student section now. They've got the last minute as I think the fans realize the women's basketball team just showed up to root on the men's. As the score was just announced here. It's a good day to be a Viking. It is. It's a fun day to be a Viking. An 82-73 right, to 73 is, lead. This is always a great game. I remember as yeah. a student that the week leading up to Central took forever. It was like being a four-year-old at Christmas. You know, I mean, you just could not. Yeah. The, the week just dragged out so long in the anticipation of this game. No, that's how I felt. Yeah. And, and, it, and, and know, even ooh, for this, this ooh. is how I felt all year after I saw that they were our last home game. I'm like, we got to <laughs> wait that long for Central versus yeah. Western? 
Weeks last weeks weeks are shorter when you turn 57, but it's still it's still a huge night. Vikings trying to break the press. Tijon Sane lost it. Kai Johnson got it back, and a foul is called before. Oh no, we have two different signals here. So first, <laughs> we have one official on our near side signaling 10 seconds. On the far side, we have a foul being called. Now, if the foul was technically, the, the shot clock sitting at 19. If the foul and this 10 seconds it's call a, It's a great scene because Jeff Flowers is probably the tallest official we have in the GNA. He's <laughs> about six foot nine. Get him in the post. Travis Bain is not one of the tallest officials in the GNA. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> and to see the two of them and Jeff leaning down to talk to him and the two of them not getting upset with one another, just kind of being yeah. very, very intense. It was, it was just a fascinating little moment to see. It is a call that has still some implications. I mean, Central Washington, it's only a nine-point deficit, mm -hmm. and you have 44.9 seconds. One timeout for Central as well. Get the ball back here, and you, know, you get a bucket or you get free throws. It's a loose ball, exactly what they were calling there. And it could be a seven-point game very quickly here. Uh, it's set everything for you. Two timeouts for Western. One timeout for the Wildcats. The Vikings are in the double bonus right now, the shooting. Central Washington would be in the one and one on a non-shooting foul. And if these two things were called simultaneous, which one gets the edge? It would be a, Ooh, have to be the foul. Right, then it's a double foul and you, do you shoot free throws or is it a, Jump just simply a, an alternating possession? Yeah, I think it, we'll find out. Isaac Murrow is gonna check back in for Western Washington as we get the call here and looking like we have free throws for Western Washington. So Kai Johnson was fouled. Kai Johnson was fouled before the 10 seconds and he'll okay. shoot free throws. Thank you. Kai Johnson, four for six from the free throw line. Vikings shooting 81% as a team in this game. And yes, are we now discussing? Are we discussing the shooter, or now they're sending everybody back to the bench, and <laughs> apparently there's been an appeal. <laughs> now, for the time being, they've, conf they've confirmed that there will be two free throws as we have some, some oddities here happening before we close out this final game. 44.9 left as this crowd is anxious to celebrate a Vikings victory. Vikings are inching towards it. It's just a nine-point difference, though, for Central Washington trying to clinch a playoff berth. And Butch Kamina has conversated here, and okay, he's got so the report. So they did confirm that the foul was before the 10-second violation. They just wanted to be sure that they had the fouler and the foulee fouled correct, and they did so the foul was on Maverick Sanders. And it Fouling. is Kai Johnson at the line. Exactly. And I mentioned Isaac Murrow had checked in, but now he will check in after the first shot as the senior re-enters. Nick Velp will sit down. Kai Johnson, a 75% free throw shooter, now up to 24 points. 12th in the country in scoring in Division II, the leading scorer west of the Rockies. And I did a little work today, third west of the Mississippi. He came off 22 points against Northwest Nazarene, has one up that here tonight on Saturday against the rival Wildcats oh. as Kai Johnson fouls the shooter, Jordan Clark. And not the foul you want to give up. And, and I think those are three knows, free throws. He looked at Tony Dominguez and he knew you uh, don't want to foul a three-point shooter and you certainly don't want to foul a three-point shooter in this situation, stopping the clock. That is his fourth personal foul. Jordan Clark, 71.4% free throw shooter as he makes the first. Vikings have benefited from some lucky misses from good Central Washington shooters here. It doesn't come at a bigger time for the Wildcats. Jordan Clark. Second of two is good. He's got one more. Yeah, he's not a 90% shooter, so he's not going to miss. Yeah, he's not going to miss, exactly. And, and yes, we know that logically does not follow, but that's how it's been tonight. And not how you, you would expect it. Jordan Clark, this could give him double figures with nine points if he makes it. 
And he does, eight point difference now. So now that it's probably the offense for defense thing here. And the Wildcats will press again. They have been able to get some pretty effective, tra good traps that haven't actually paid off, mm -hmm. I guess is the way to put it. Grant Holiday to inbound. Gets it, Will Wilson, back to Grant Holiday. Holiday to Sane. Vikings trying to advance past their front court. Five seconds to do it. Up to Tijon Sane, and now the Wildcats will probably foul, and they do yeah. foul Tijon Sane. See if you could get the steal in the back court. Yeah. Well, force once the you 10. can't, then you have to foul. And they still had time to do that. Tijon Sane will shoot two here. Sane with nine points heading to the line. Four of them have came from the free throw line. He's four of five. Tijon came in at 89.9% and is four of five, which means he's not over 90%. <laughs> he's Makes been five of five. We'd have had some concerns. There you go. Makes the first of two. So nine-point lead. Vikings, you should be comfortable here with 27 seconds yeah. left, but stranger things have happened. No fouls on three-point shooters as Tijon same misses that one, so it is up nine. Shot clock turned off. Pull up three, Cameron McNeil off the front rim. Will Wilson grabs it, and they're going to foul Wilson as so, well. And I'll say stranger things have happened. One of the teams in the top ten, I think, in the country in the women's side this week is Bentley. They blew a 13-point lead in the last two minutes earlier wow. this week. That was, uh, it's not something you see too often. 13. You certainly don't see Definitely. a nationally ranked yeah. team do it, right? It, I would get it if it was nine or seven or eight, but 13, 13. is it's a wild, wild ride to go on. You know, not 13 in the middle of the second half. 13 with inside two minutes. Yeah. Well, Wilson first free throw is good of two. Wilson has 12 points. Vikings with five players in double figures tonight. Just like. There's Jordan Clark for three. Deep one is no good. Dijon Sane secures a rebound. Sane is going to dribble it forward, and it looks right, like Central gonna Washington is going to give up here. Western Washington wins the rivalry game, 87 to 76. The Vikings keep their season alive as they try and push for the postseason. Vikings eight and nine now in conference play. Central Washington nine and seven, and the door is open for Western Washington to try and steal a spot. In the postseason, it was senior night. Jonathan Ned, Darius Gary, Isaac Moore for the last time here in Carver Gymnasium. Right, one we'll more. See. And just try to stay alive. They did that tonight. They an excellent performance in a lot of different ways. And boy, a really good week for the Western Washington men's basketball team. They have been outstanding in two games this weekend. And uh, one more and then see what happens with Seattle Pacific and Alaska. Yeah, Seattle Pacific, the most close team to being fallen out of the standings in replace of Western Washington as we're going to send things down so, to the court yep. with Adam Race and the senior Isaac Moreau for a post-game interview. Adam Race alongside Isaac Moreau. Isaac, what a win. Revenge game, rivalry game. Talk about the emotions and the importance of a win like this. You know, last time we played them, they kind of blew us out. And so we all realized we had to come in with the fire and realize that if you want to make playoffs, you got to win this one. So we all just went all out. Down by six at halftime, you end up winning by 11. Take me into the locker room. What are those halftime adjustments? Um, we all realize we've been here before. Like last week, or last game, we were already here. The exact same thing, we were down by eight, and we still came back one by 10. So we already were used to this. Yeah, and talk about that mentality. Back to back, come from behind wins. It's something you guys have had trouble with this year. Talk about what you guys have done so well this week to come from behind from halftime. You know, I gotta credit that to Kai. Every time we're uh, um, telling us hockey, it's all about fighting. Uh, every time we just talk about how we're fighting for everything, and so we fought for this game and the last game. You talk about fighting. This is your specialty, the defensive intensity. You guys forced a lot of turnovers tonight. Talk about the defense today. Man, me as a defensive person, I love it. Uh, what's it called? We all knew that we needed to start closing in and start making sure people don't hit shots and whatnot, and so we just started locking in. Talk about the mindset going into this last game, trying to lock up playoffs. What's the team mindset right now? We just got to win. That's all it is. We just got to win. Tell me about the atmosphere tonight. Almost 2,000 people here for rivalry night. What's it like to play under those conditions? Man, it's a great atmosphere. I'll say on the bench, it's like so many people are here. I love it. it. We feed off of it. And senior night for you, congratulations. Tell me about the emotions of picking up a big win like this on your senior night. It means a lot, man, especially just going there and being able to play in it and just be effective. It means a lot to get this dub. Isaac, great game. Thank you very much. Congratulations on the win. That'll do it for the 2023-2024 regular season here on Vikings TV. Thank you so much for tuning in all season. I've been Adam Race.
for Zen Hill, Butch Kamina, and our entire crew. Good night, and Scovikes.